and welcome to the Spice Rack. I'm Shannon Spicer and I'd like to add a little spice to your quilting. This is week 10 of my series, the Spice Rack Sampler, and that means we just have three blocks left to complete for this series. This block today and then two more after that. Our block this week is called Coxcomb. You can download a copy by following the link in the description. Like many of the blocks in this series, I came across it in Maggie Malone's book, 5500 Quilt Block Designs. She credits this block to Nancy Cabot. Nancy Cabot is the pen name of Loretta Leitner Rising. She wrote for the Chicago Tribune for 32 years, starting in the 1920s. In the 1930s, she published one quilt block a day in the newspaper. Readers could send in five cents for the pattern. I have searched and searched to see this quilt block associated with her name in another source besides the Maggie Malone book, but every time I do a search, I come up with a very different coxcomb design that is floral and is applique. So I'm not totally sure if this block really was designed by Nancy Cabot or if there's been a mix-up somehow. I, I trust Maggie Malone did her research, but I, have, I can't seem to find any evidence of it on the internet. So if you do a search for that name, you'll likely come up with the applique design that I found as well. Regardless, I love this design and I've included it in my sampler. I love that it looks harder than it really is. It's really not that hard, but I placed it toward the end of this series because we will use some skills we learned in earlier blocks. We're going to make half square triangles and also quarter square triangles or hourglass blocks. We're also going to subcut to create the center checkerboard, and finally, this block is ultimately a square in a square, like the last two designs. So let's get started. And these are going to be sewn together, right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance, and then we're going to subcut them in half. Here we have them sewn together, and I press them open, pressing toward the dark side. Okay, now we have them cut into our two sections, and just like we did for the center of the snail's trail block, and what we also did for the different sections of the railroad block, we turn this piece the opposite way, and we're going to sew these together to make a checkerboard. Right sides together, quarter, quarter inch seam allowance, and since it's turned, the seams will nest properly. So here we have the center checkerboard piece. This is actually trimmed down just a bit from what I showed you just a minute ago, and we don't typically trim down pieces that are like this that are square. It's more common to trim down like half square triangles because they'll be a little bit wonky, but the sizes for these pieces would have been an odd measurement and, and if you're anything like me you don't like to cut out odd measurements I would rather sew them together and then trim them to an even me measurement which is what we have here. And next we're going to take the smaller of the two squares that we have and we're going to put them right sides together but mine are solid so who knows which sides are the right sides. And this time around we are going to make half square triangles, but it's going to be the two at a time method, not the four at a time method that we've used for all the other pieces. And the reason is, is because we only need two. We don't need four, so there's no point in making four. I'm going to put one pin over here. And we'll put another one on the other side. We want to keep the center clear. Because we are going to mark a line from point to point with a marking pen. I like to use the friction pens because they disappear with heat. I only use it on the bottom side or underside of any sort of fabric or quilting block because if your fabric gets cold the lines can reappear. So I would not recommend using this on the top of your quilt 
to mark quilting lines, especially if you're going to ship your quilt to a show. It's going to get cold in shipping and those lines can reappear. Now I'm going to sew a quarter inch on each side of this and then we're going to cut it in half. So here we go. Here's our piece. I haven't even pressed it yet. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it on that center line. And now I'm going to press each of them open. So I have two half square triangles. Okay, we have our two half square triangles nicely pressed open. And now we're actually going to cut them on the diagonal because we only need them as triangles that are two-toned. Two-toned triangles. So I'm cutting exactly from point to point. Okay, so now I have four of these pieces. And we're going to come back with our center checkerboard piece. And we're actually going to sew this as a square in a square like we did with the last two blocks. We're going to attach a triangle to each side. We work in pairs of opposing sides. And we want to repeat the checkerboard pattern. So we would not want to put green against green and cream against cream. We want to put green against cream, cream against green. That's hard to say. Okay, so I'm going to lay all these out first before I sew them. These two pieces fit here. Let's see, that means that one will go there, and yes, that one will go there. So I'm going to leave them laying out so I don't accidentally sew a wrong one to the wrong place. So I'm going to do this one first. I'm going to put it down right sides together. I'm going to line up that center seam there. So we're going to match up the center seam and sew it. And I've given plenty of extra leeway here. We're going to be trimming this down. So, you do want to make sure that your center line is matched up. I check it before I press it in case I want to unpick it, but I think it looks pretty good to me. So now we're going to go ahead and do the opposite side. I shouldn't flip it around, that'll get too confusing. So now we're going to do the opposite, the opposing side. We always work in pairs. So we're going to match that center seam up and sew along this line quarter inch seam allowance. All right, again, I'm just checking. That's the tiniest bit off, but it's not worth unpicking for me. <laughs> if it were further, then I would, but it doesn't look too bad to me. So now I'm going to press these open and then we will trim off this little excess and we will do these sides. Okay, so now let's check, make sure we're right with the green for the cream, the cream for the green, and so on and so forth. So we're going to do these two opposing sides. We'll do one side and then the other. We wanna make sure that center line, that center seam is matched up. You can pin if you want to pin or you can be crazy like me and not bother. Okay, so here we have both the opposite sides now sewn. The seams line up very nicely. I'm going to press them open and then we will trim the block back, but already we start to see that really neat center design emerging. Okay, so here it is nicely pressed, but again we do need to trim because we're going to want points to match. And in order for these points to match the next piece that comes in, it's going to need to be a quarter inch away. So we're going to trim a quarter inch away on all of these, and it should come up to the measurement that's listed in the pattern. So now we're going to take our triangles. Next. 
and we're continuing with the square in the square method. We want to attach the dark or the green, whichever color you're using, onto the side that has the cream, the light. And that will be opposite sides. We always work on opposite sides. So we'll do these two sides first, the right sides together. I like to eyeball it here, center with that center point there, and bring it down. Let's see. And just like the other pieces, I've given you extra leeway and we'll be trimming back. So it doesn't have to be exactly in the center. So now these sides are on and we will press them open and then we will do the other sides. And now before we attach these to either side, I do like to trim off these little edge dog ear pieces. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so here we have the block with the sides pressed open, and I went ahead and trimmed it according to the measurements in the pattern. And now we're going to set that aside. It's just like when we set the center checkerboard piece aside, and we still have these two squares of fabric left. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the other two squares. We're making two half square triangles because we only need two. We can't do the four at a time method. So we're going to mark from point to point down the center, and I'm going to pin. I do this method. I just do a pin on the side and one on the other side. We want to leave this center open. And from point to point, I'm going to mark with my marking pen, just lightly. I don't do it very hard. And I usually wipe my ruler off. And we're going to sew a quarter inch on each side and then cut it down the middle. Okay, so now we have two big half square triangles. And I'm going to press those open, just like I did with my other ones. Now, just like we did with the smaller squares, with each of the two half square triangles, we're going to actually cut them in half from point to point so that we have two tone triangles. They will not be squares any longer. They will be triangles, but they will be two toned. And then we will have four of them. And now for the final step of assembling this, I'm going to go to still shots so I can fit it all in my frame. As we're sewing this piece together, you do want to make sure that this center line matches up with your center line. You can peel it back right there and make sure that those lines match up. You don't have the line extending all the way to the end, so you can't necessarily check it that way. But I just peel it back a little bit there. As long as it matches, then I hold it, or you can pin it, and sew it there.
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, you can download the pattern using the link in the description below. Here are pictures of all the blocks in this series, and you can see some mock-ups I created with just this block on my blog by following the website link. Let me know in the comments what you think of this design, and thank you for watching!